Welcome to our lecture online. Now well, let's do an example of a frequency shift problem. We have an initial function in the time domain, let's call it cosine of omega t, and then we realize that if we take the Fourier transform of the original function in time domain, multiply times e to the j omega t, we'll get the same Fourier transform but shifted in frequency by omega sub naught. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So we're going to take the Fourier transform of the cosine of omega t times e to the j omega sub naught t. We're going to rewrite the cosine in the following way. So this becomes equal to, and we're going to factor out a one half, one half times the Fourier transform of e to the, and we're going to have j omega sub naught t plus e to the minus j omega sub naught t. So that's the equivalent of the cosine of omega sub naught t, of course divided by 2, but we factor it out. And we're going to multiply it times e to the j omega sub naught t, like that. And we have the proper number of brackets on there. So the next step would be to multiply this together to see what we get. So this becomes equal to 1 half times the Fourier transform of... When we multiply these two together, we add the exponents, so that gives us e to the j times 2 omega sub naught times t. And then we multiply these two together, the exponents negate, that's e to the 0, or simply 1. So let's go back and see if we can remember how to take the Fourier transform or something like that. We can say that the Fourier transform of e to j omega sub naught t is going to be equal to 2 pi times the delta function of omega minus omega sub naught. And we should also know that the Fourier transform of e to the j omega, or actually, let me go ahead, the Fourier transform of 1, let's do that instead, that's going to be equal to 2 pi times the delta function of omega. So now that we know that, let's plug that in here and see what we get. So this becomes equal to 1 half times, take the Fourier transform of this. Now notice we're going to have 2 omega there, so we have to put in 2 omega over here. So this becomes 2 pi times the delta function of omega minus 2 omega sub naught. So that causes a frequency shift of 2 omega sub naught to the left. And then take the Fourier transform of 1, we get plus 2 pi times the delta function of omega. And then if we factor out a 2 pi, we cancel out the 2's, and this becomes equal to pi times the delta function of omega minus 2 omega sub naught plus the delta function of omega. So basically what you can see here that it's centered, the, the Fourier transform will be centered on omega sub naught to the left, and then you have a, a, a frequency shift of omega sub naught further to the left and omega sub naught to the right. So basically what I'm trying to tell here is that we have, we're going to have a function that's going to be centered about the point omega sub naught. So let me write that in there, omega sub naught. So this is the Fourier transform that we expect to see. And this is omega. And then whatever the function is, we're going to have a shift 1 to the left of, this is minus omega sub naught, so this would be minus 2 omega sub naught, and a shift to the right, which will be at 0. And then we have whatever function we have over here, so maybe we'll just draw something in, something arbitrary that would look like that. So instead of having the function centered about this point, multiplying the cosine omega t times e to the j omega sub naught t, that shifts it to the left and to the right, the amplitude will be dropped by one half, and you can see how that's uncentered about the center point of minus omega sub naught. So that's a nice example to give us a better understanding again about what we mean by frequency shifting in as property number four for the Fourier transforms. And that's how it's done.